In this video, I'm showing you how to whiteboard with Confluence so you can brainstorm with your team inside the same software that's linked directly to Jira. To follow along, sign up and create your free account to Confluence using my link in the description bar down below. That way, it's your own personal sandbox that you have complete control over. Stick until the end of this video because we'll also talk about what makes this whiteboard easier to use with Jira. All right, so after you've created your free account with Confluence, your screen should look like this. Click on the space that's tied to your name, which in my example is going to be Alvin. So let's click on it and what you can do is you can create your whiteboard inside of your space by clicking on the white plus symbol on the same panel for content. Click on it and choose the second option for whiteboard. And you should see this appear right on your screen. Now, what I love the most about the Confluence whiteboard is that you have access to more than 30 templates to facilitate retrospectives, lead brainstorming discussions, create user stories and maps, and even for leading your sprint planning discussions. And they're all divided among these five different use cases categories here. So brainstorming ideas with your team, planning and strategizing, creating flowcharts and different diagrams, building out your team, and of course, practicing agile with the different ceremonies. Now for this video, let's pick the template for simple and retrospective. And when you do that, it will copy and paste and insert the template inside of your whiteboard. Why start from scratch when you can leverage the templates that already contains the best practices that you can work from. So for now, let's talk about how you can navigate the whiteboard. Your whiteboard is literally an infinite canvas that you can work from. And as you can see, there is a small faint grid line in the background. If you want to zoom in, all you have to do is click on the plus icon that's found at the bottom right corner of your screen. Alternatively, for a fast keyboard shortcut, if you're like me and you have a MacBook, then all you have to do is press the command button and then use your mouse button to scroll in and scroll out. Just like that accordingly. Now, if you're using a Windows computer, then you have to use the control button and then zoom in and zoom out with your mouse scroll button. To move around, press and hold the right mouse button to move left, right, up, and down. And what you'll see is your mouse arrow will convert into a hand icon and that will show that you're actually moving your screen. If you prefer to just use your keyboard, then just press the up, down, left, and the right arrows on your keyboard. So that we have the full area to see our entire whiteboard, click on this left arrow to collapse your left panel and you'll have a much bigger viewing screen of your whiteboard. Now let me share with you two of my most favorite keyboard shortcuts that I use whenever I'm inside of Confluence. First is by entering into the full screen. Just type in the letter F using your keyboard and you will go into the full screen inside. Super helpful if you want to drive virtual collaborations with your team and focus only on what's being shown inside of your whiteboard. Now, if you want to exit out of it, just press the escape key on your keyboard. Now, my second favorite keyboard shortcut is zoom to fit. So it goes back to the full size or zooms in all the way. So let's say that you're zoomed in all the way into this section right here. To zoom back out very quickly, you just press command shift plus one, and it should zoom out all of the way like this. And voila. Now, if you want to zoom in right away, then all you have to do is select all the areas and then press command, shift, and then if you're a Windows user, then press alt shift two to zoom in. And if you're a Windows user, then press alt shift one to zoom out. For our purposes, since I'm using a Mac, I'm going to zoom out by pressing Command, Shift, and then 1. By the way, if you're gaining value out of the tips I'm sharing so far, make sure to smash that a like button for me to show me your support. All right, so let's talk about the floating toolbar that's presented at the very bottom of your screen. The first tool that we have is what's known as a sticky note. 
just drag and drop the sticky note into the whiteboard on your good column. So we'll zoom in right here so we can have a better idea on what this looks like. So we've added in a virtual sticky note. This is actually the equivalent of your physical sticky note, and you can use them to write down any of your thoughts and move them around the whiteboard to organize any ideas that you or your team members might have. For example, let's click on this sticky note and let's type some sample text inside. Let's say that testing was successful with the new user interface. All right, so now that we've typed that in, if we click on the sticky note itself, we'll have a new pop-up up here with this toolbar. We can change the color of the sticky note. So right now it's green, we can change it to blue if we like, or even to red. For now, let's change it to a light yellow. We can also change the text. So if it's a normal or a heading text, but let's pick normal text for now. We can format it so it's bolded or not bolded. We can change whether it's bulleted list or not, whether it's aligned left, center, or right. And we can also add in a comment. For this example, let's say that we're going to add a comment and it'll appear right here. And for this example, let's say that we agree with this lessons learned. And we'll click on save for now. And you'll see your comment appear on the right hand side of your screen and also in the middle of your screen. Now, if you exit out of this by pressing escape and also this X box, what you'll see is that if you want to access all of the comments inside your whiteboard, just go to this right panel here and click on this chat balloon and you'll see all of the icons that are tied to your comments. Now, the second feature in the toolbar that allows you to add text directly onto it is this text feature. So let's drag and drop a text onto here saying no issues with our daily scrum. The next feature that we have is what's known as these different kinds of shapes. So if I hover over this, I can see all the different shapes that are available to us. So an ellipse, rectangle, diamond, triangle, parallelogram, all these different ones. And this can be helpful if let's say you're trying to create a flow chart of how a process works together. Let's add two squares right here and we'll drag and drop them right there. Let's follow this by adding in a, a diamond as if it was a flow chart to show you what that looks like. We'll press escape to exit out of it. And what's great about this entire setup is you can click on the center points of these shapes and it will automatically connect it to another shape. So let's say I delete these two shapes. I can hover over this and it'll automatically create another shape below it or to the right of it. Now let's say that I wanted a diamond right next to that. I can drag and drop it onto it or next to it and I can connect it to each other like that. And so you can see that it's very easy to create a quick flowchart with your team if you're brainstorming and figuring out ways to control a process. So with this, you can easily add in text inside of each step. So let's do that so I can show you what that looks like. So right now I am adding in different steps to each of these boxes. And then I'll also make the diamond here a decision point. Now the next feature inside of our toolbar are these connecting lines. So we can connect shapes together or just draw lines on our screen. So let me show you what that looks like. I can easily just put this arrow right here and point to this flow chart. Now the next cool feature about this toolbar is you have another feature called sections. And what this allows you to do is if you click this, it will create a separate quote unquote section that you can drag and drop onto your area that you want. With sections, anything that you put inside of this will stay inside. So let's say that we inserted a few shapes inside of this screen. Let's go ahead and let's drag and drop a diamond. And let's say we drag and drop a circle or an ellipse inside. And let's make this a different color. 
and I'll resize this so that way it's a little bit smaller and it fits inside the section itself. And let's also put in a text as well. And we'll, we'll say that this is a sample text, right? So right now, all of these two shapes and the sample text is inside the section. So if I click on the section itself, it will address, it will move everything that's inside of it. So you don't have to worry about moving each part individually. All you got to do is just click on the section and it will move everything inside, which can be extremely helpful if you have a lot of text or shapes that you need to move around. Now, what makes Confluence Whiteboard extremely unique and very helpful is that it integrates directly with Jira. We can actually import issues from Jira and it can help us save a lot of time when we're brainstorming with our team, reviewing our team's work, or leading a retrospective. On the toolbar here, there is a feature that says import from Jira. If we click it, we're going to see this pop-up window that says import from Jira. Let's choose a project for our e-commerce shopping app. For now, let's choose one random issue, the one that says run acceptance test that's in progress. And let's click import issue. It's going to appear right here. And let's say that we'll drag and drop this into the right below it. If we click on the actual Jira card, it will actually open up in a separate window taking you to the Jira product itself for that specific issue, which can be extremely helpful whenever you're brainstorming with your team. With this Jira card, let's say that we want to add a comment to this issue. All we have to do is click on it, right click, and select this option for add a comment. And in here, we can easily add a comment that's tied to this issue. So let's say that acceptance tests ran smoothly with the help of Michael Scott. And if you've ever watched The Office, then you know how funny Michael Scott can be. And actually, The Office was one of my favorite shows um, growing up um, when I was in high school and in college. So let's click Save. And now you'll see that this comment has been added to our chain of comments from the right panel. So if I exit out of this and I go back, you'll see all the comments that we've added so far. So yeah, everything is looking pretty good. The other cool feature that the Confluence Whiteboard has is that you can create Jira issues from your actual sticky notes. So let's say that you're in a brainstorming session and you're refining your user requirements. You can turn one of your sticky notes, which I'll pop on here, directly into an issue that's inside of Jira. Let me show you how to do that. With this sticky note that we just put on here, Let's say that this sticky note is for the user must be able to search for items based on its category. So I'll go ahead and I'll type that in right here. Now to convert this issue into a Jira issue, just left click the sticky note and you'll see this new toolbar, right? On the very right hand side, there's a feature that says create a Jira issue. Click on this and what you'll see is a new dialog box appear on this side of the screen. For this issue, let's say that's going to be tied for your project called e-commerce shopping app and that the issue type will be a story. With these fields filled out for us, let's click on the blue button for create. And voila, right there, it automatically converted your sticky note into an actual Jira issue just with the click of a button. I mean, how fast and how easy was that? If we need to change any details, just click on this blue hyperlink inside the Jira card and it'll open up on another tab inside your window browser. And right away, let's say I wanted to add a description here or even assign it to someone. Let's say it was assigned to me then I can automatically update it on the fly while we're brainstorming inside of our whiteboard. This can be extremely helpful if, let's say, you're trying to um, decide several new user stories need to be added inside of your JIRA project. You can also use your whiteboard to collect these requirements and simply convert your brainstorming ideas into user stories instantly, which will then be added into your backlog instantaneously. Now let's go back to the other features that are part of our toolbar. 
But Whiteboard also has another feature which I want to share with you, and that is what's called a timer. So if you go to the very bottom, a timer literally appears right here when you click on this three dots icon. Go to the top, click on timer, and a timer will appear right at the very top right portion of your screen, and you can adjust the time. So for example, let's say that it's not five minutes, but let's say that it's actually five seconds. That way I can show you what that will look like. So let's modify that to be five seconds and we'll press the play start button. And after five seconds, the indicator will count down and you'll hear a ticking sound. And there you go, the timer went off and it shows you that the time has been up. So if you're brainstorming live with your team, it's great to use for a brainstorming session so it drives the urgency and it gives everyone the time to put all their ideas onto the whiteboard and people can see how much time they have left. The other cool feature with the Confluence whiteboard is that you can insert stamps and stickers to make your virtual diagramming and your brainstorming sessions much more engaging with your team. For example, let's say that your team is brainstorming ideas on the app itself, right? So go to the very bottom, click on the stamps button, and you can choose a huge variety of options. So let's say that we're going to choose a thumb because we like that stamp. You can put it just to show some emphasis in your emotion and just to make it much more engaging with your team. You can also use different stamps like a fire icon to show that that's fire, right? Or even like the chili pepper sign. Now, if you want to go a little bit deeper, you can also access stickers and add them to your board. And you can choose whichever sticker that you want that might best suit your needs. For our example, let's choose the category for workshop facilitators. And we'll choose the one that says yes. And we'll just add it right here. And yeah, there you go. You can use stickers and stamps to showcase emotions and also just to make it a little bit more interactive and user friendly with your team. When you master how to use the basics of this whiteboard, it makes leading your agile teams very, very easy, especially when it comes to, you know, to leading your brainstorming sessions and even sprint retrospectives. If you'd like to learn how to use Confluence software with my free course from start to finish, please watch this video next and I'll see you in the next video.